So Causeway Coast Women are delighted to welcome Claire Seaton from Moods Hairdressing in Coleraine. We're going to have a wee chat about the latest restrictions brought in this week by the Northern Ireland Executive. Claire, you've had to close your business for the second time in a year. How are you feeling today? Um, I am feeling shocked that um, I've went in, we've went into another lockdown. I think it's unfair, uh, especially our industry, beauticians, hairdressers, um, cafe owners, restaurants, everybody I'm just feeling are like that we've put so much into getting our businesses reopened and put the money in and we're closed again and feeling a bit sad. You must feel really frustrated by the fact that you know other businesses like gyms and soft play areas are still allowed to open despite the fact you followed all the guidelines you've introduced yep. safety measures that were required you know yeah you mustn't know where to turn next well we complied with the government guidelines as you say we um ensured the clients and staff's health and safety was paramount um we were just the client numbers and the salon restrict restricted movement within the salon um we we always wore masks and the clients coming in out of the salon from the very beginning of the first lockdown. That was the way my salon run. Um, sanitised every station before and after each client. Um, we worked more hours for less business, Gillian, and we were um, appointment only. There was no walk-ins. So I feel as if we did um, as much as what we could have, you know, to ensure our safety and the client's safety and make it all so enjoyable and everybody felt comfortable coming in um but the the soft play area really shocked me when i saw that last night on facebook because i could take my wee eight-year-old nephew to the jet center but he can't go to school mm -hmm. in his bubble and in his class um that just blows my mind i, I can't understand that at all are you concerned that this four week period could be extended even further? Yes, really concerned um, because we have moved all our appointments now forward the 13th, Friday the 13th, what a date. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yes, we have, um, we've moved all our appointments and plus over the past few weeks I've been making Christmas appointments for Christmas and now all that, all those appointments are being changed and it's going to have to be, it's just a whole lot of upheaval. Are you worried about your business? We're going to be recovering for that, from this for years. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about my business. I think I have a good loyal clientele. I will bounce back again. Um, but we've lost money. Things are tight. We've pull, had to pull on our belts. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, it's, uh, it's, not what, it's not what I expect. It's, you know, I've, I've ran always a good business over 10 years now. And um, it's, uh, we, are, we have been and will be recovering from this for quite some time. And to the people that are sort of carrying on as if life was normal and there's, you know, not adhering to social distancing, etc. Like, what would you say, especially as your business is being directly affected now? I do feel sorry for people. I feel sorry for the kids. I have two teenagers, 16, 18, doing their GCSEs this year, doing their A-levels this year. And I think young ones have been tarred with the same brush. My kids have been good. They've wore their masks. They haven't been out. They haven't, you know, been seeing their girlfriends or anything like that. And it's just... Um, when you see down Port Stewart and all these young ones and they're drinking and going mad, it's, mm -hmm. oh, it's what do you do? I don't know. Yeah. It's, it is frustrating. Yeah, and it's a tough time, especially for businesses like yourself who have no option. You've been told to shut the doors and that's it. I always thought I had a good mental health, but this would send you mad. Mm -hmm. um, with the salon being open, there's so many uh, people that come into the salon to chat, to get away. Yeah. Um, you know, to have we are dressers, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Um, I feel that uh, you know, I love all my clients and you know, we always have a good chat and everything. And I think there's so many people that are missing out on um that wee couple hours mm -hmm. 
in, in a coffee shop going for lunch, yeah. you know, like el elderly people. Uh, but not just elderly people. There's a lot of lonely people out there, you know. There is. Um, it's not just elderly, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pe people's mental health, you know. That mental health. Is being affected mental. by this as well as, as, you know, the economic situation as well. Oh, totally, totally. And, um, you know, for self-employed, I, I know a girl whose husband and herself are both self-employed. He's a coffee shop. She's a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. You know, financially, I don't know what they're, you know, they must be so worried. There's so many businesses that are so worried about themselves and trying to just keep going. Yeah. I suppose at the moment you just have to hope and pray that come the end of this four weeks, you can get back, back into action again. Because I suppose it's coming into your busy time, the run up to Christmas. I don't think... Um, Christmas is going to really happen in the salon the way we normally know it. Um, it's, it's going to be so different. You know, people are going to be making their appointments now and they're, I don't think they're going to need their hair done now for Christmas. You think uh, these restrictions will sort of, maybe not to the extent at the moment, but do you think it's going to affect uh, hotels, bars, restaurants going forward? Massively. Mm -hmm. Massively. And, um, like Norma Wilkinson and the Lodge Hotel. Um, they have been just fantastic landlords, landlady. She's been amazing and really supportive through the first lockdown, through this lockdown. Um, you know, and I, I was so sad leaving the salon last night and all the signs up in the Lodge, locked up, empty hotel. And what they have to go through, you know, me as a small business, what I had to go through to cancel people and everything, but what big businesses like that, yeah. um, to even reopen again now in four to six weeks, um, hopefully four weeks. I've heard in the grapevine it's going to be six weeks. Um, it's just, it's scary and it's, um, it's stressful. What would you like to see happen over the next few months, Claire? Oh, I just want us to get back to normal. I hear all these words, new normal. Yeah bubble socially distanced i just could go scream you know um i just i just want to get the business back open again mm -hmm. carry on with you know really what we've been doing i can't see what else i can put in place as a business owner um to make things any safer to make things any different um all my clients i know they're all safe there's nobody being silly i don't you know i don't know what else we can do i think we just have to get on with it and what would you say if you were in front of the powers that be in the northern Ireland executive that made the decision this week to close yourself and beauticians and cafes etc down for the four weeks what would you actually say to them if you could speak to them face to face to close cafes down to close restaurants that are really struggling hairdressers beauticians that have spent, some of these restaurants have spent thousands putting up outdoor areas and heaters and everything for nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, I just, uh, I don't know the way forward, Gillian, I don't know. I think it's very uncertain times for everybody, isn't it? Uncertain I know. and quite frightening really for a lot of people, that, you know, those who have businesses that are really struggling people who are on their own, you know, that can't get out and about. It, it's just, it's just unprecedented times really, isn't it? It really is. And also, um, you know, the hospitals and everything now, yes, they're, they're getting organized for, for these patients and everything. But I feel so sorry for all these cancer patients, people that need transplants, people that need seen to in hospitals, waiting on appointments yeah. and all that now. I've heard a few people now with things all cancelled. Yeah. You know, you can't get to see a doctor. No. Where are they? <laughs> I just, it's terrible, you know. It is. We can only hope um, that things turn around by the start of next year. We really wouldn't want to go through another year like 2020, that's for sure. That is for sure. And I said last year, 2020 is going to be such a good year. It sounds great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, 
We just have to keep everything crossed that things turn a corner and improve. Yes, we definitely we have to keep just we have to just keep going, Jilly, and there's no other option. Indeed. Claire from Moods Hairdressing, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you.